Okay, for this I'm going to specifically go over how to get started with a Python bot in RLBot v5 beta. So to start off, I'm going to assume that you do already have Python downloaded. At least Python 3.11 is required. 3.12 also works perfectly fine. I personally have Python 3.12.6 installed right now. And all links will be in the description. And we're going to start off by heading over to my RLBot Python example. We're going to click on use this template and create a new repository. You can name it anything we want. I'm going to give it just a basic name. Hit create repository. Then refresh. And here we go. We've got our repository. I'm going to copy this link. And we're going to go and clone this repository into my projects folder. I'm going to go into it. There we go. And then we're going to just follow this quick start. Uh, if Python 3 does not work, then it's going to be Python. It could be Pi. It could be uh, Python 3.11, 3.12. It depends on how you installed Python, but one of those will work. For me, it's just going to be Python. And then I'm going to get the second command to activate the virtual environment. And then this last command will install all of the Python packages that are needed for us to do pretty much anything we want with V5. Okay, and then for this last part, we do need to download rlbotserver.exe manually. Uh, you can click on this link. going to come to the latest release and ideally in the future this will be shipped with the GUI but there is no GUI yet so I'm going to go ahead and download the exe for windows and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to just move over the exe into our projects root folder and then while we're here we can go ahead and open visual studio code and this is just an example of how to run a match right here so you see we search the root directory and this root dir gets passed in as where it's going to be looking for the main executable right now so that's why we needed to put the main executable in our root directory. But you can change this to anything that you want. And then we're just going to start the match rlbot.toml, which is defined in this toml right here. So, you know, we got Steam. If you have Rocket League on Epic Games, just put Epic. But this only works on Windows. If you have Linux, you actually have to do custom with Game Path Legendary. Uh, Legendary is currently the only way to use Rocket League with Epic Game Store on Linux. But if you're on Windows, Steam, Epic, either will work. It's fine. And then as you can see here, we're going to start a game. Two cars, a normal soccer map on DFH Stadium. Enable rendering and state setting. This is all the mutators along with all the possible mutator options. And then here we go. It's going to spawn us in with ourself and one of our bots. So I've got this open. So I'm just going to go Python run.py. And it's going to start the exe. It's going to tell rlbotserver.exe to start the match and that is going to start the game for us it'll put us right in the match right away here we go
And as you can see, everything's working just fine. So one thing that might be useful for development is actually this dev.toml right here. So the difference is that auto start bots is actually defined as false here, which is the default. So do be careful of uh, if this is not specified, core will not start the bots. Uh, this must be specified as true. But we've got unlimited match length, just one of our bots. And then we're going to start our bot manually so we can hot reload it in the middle of the match. Uh, if you do have more than one bot, either you need to manually set the spawn ID or you can just use continue and spawn. Continue and spawn is very, very quick in V5. So I would recommend using continue and spawn. It's very easy. Just take continue and spawn, put it in here, say continue and spawn, and now it'll just work as V4 continue and spawn worked, but it'll do it in about, I'd say half a second in order to actually reboot the bots. It's really fast, but it depends on how long it takes your bot to start up. So uh, in order to actually use dev.toml, I'm just going to come back here to run.py, specify dev.toml instead of rlbot.toml. Um, as for the current match, uh, I'm just going to control C this. And then because we are going to be running our bot separately, we do need uh, another command window. So I'm going to Python run.py here. It's going to start the match for us. But we're going to see that this is not actually going to move. Until I activate the virtual environment. If I can spell. And then manually run the bot with the command that's given here. At least by default, this will work. And we're going to see that immediately our bot starts moving. And I killed it just to show that we can restart it, um, but I hit the ball anyways because of the momentum. It's not going to move. We're moving. We're not. We're moving. So this is really how hot reloading will work in V5. This is how you can easily do development, at least without um, continuing spawn. This is one way of doing it. And this works for every language as well, which is the nice part. And as for our actual bot, it's defined in bot.py here. This example bot is actually pretty much a line for line translation of the v4 python example bot which is pretty nice so you'll see most of this code is exactly the same but with some of the nice v5 changes and then instead of using cfgs we are using tomls now so tomls is like a defined specification so we do have things like multi-line descriptions still and lists but one nice thing about tomls is that we do have syntax highlighting unlike cfgs because this is a actually defined specification, there's some nice syntax highlighting that most text editors support. And loadout.toml is extremely similar to the current CFG format for it. And if you do want to know more in depth about what has changed from B4 to B5, you're in luck because over here to my python interface we can actually come over here to the wiki i've i've tried to start writing documentation so at least for the migration page right here everything is actually pretty well spelled out for how to go from v4 to v5 so it specifies here all the differences going from cfgs to tomls the new naming specification as well as all the different things that you can define in the new tomls. 
how to convert the old TOMLs to the new TOMLs, as well as this Python script right here, which you can copy. And then this is how you use it. And this will automatically convert your old CFGs to your new TOMLs. You just pass in the path to your old CFG right here, and then the path to your new TOML right here. And it'll just take this and do it. As well as the changes to main.py, you can see if you've worked with standalone bots in v4, it's a little similar to that. Uh, of all of the imports have changed. All of the imports. I don't think one of the imports is the same. Um, this goes into a bit more detail about the changes moving from base agent standalone bot to bot. All the changes with ball prediction, field info, packet, and then also match settings. And also all the new mutators are spelled out right here. There's a lot of new mutators. This combined with all the old mutators might get a little confusing. So I have put together a list of all of the game modes that have ever existed in Rocket League and what their mutators are. So if you ever wondered how to set up a Heatseeker Ricochet map, this is how you do it. And these are the three maps that are used. Similarly, if you want to do Boomer Ball, here's all the mutators. No specific map. Or if you want to do labs, here's all the maps. Or if you want to do Spike Rush. And also Super Cube, anything you would want. They're all here. And then also, most importantly, I'd probably argue, are the changes to the game tick packet. You know, some things have just been renamed, but some things have been removed in favor of other things. For example, jumped and double jumped have been removed. But this tells you what to do. So, for example, jumped has been removed, but this can be directly replaced by checking if dodge timeout is not negative one. And we can see the description of dodge timeout right here. Some of the new things are we now have controller inputs in the game tick packet. We can see who the last spectated player was. This could end up being very useful if you're debugging your bots and then you can make only the bot that you're spectating actually render debug information. And that would just clean up a lot of the clutter. And also accolades, hopefully some extra mode scripts, meme bots might be able to take advantage of this. I am excited to see what's done. Of course, the new air state enum, which has a bit of extra information in it as well, like dodging. And this will go over every little change that has been made. Uh, if you notice something's not in here, please let me know so I can add it. If you have any questions, also be sure to pop on over to the RL bot Discord. Ask me those questions. If your question is Python specific for V5, come over to the Python channel. Feel free to ping me. Uh, if you think you've discovered a bug in V5, feel free to drop by Framework Dev and ask me what's going on. And I wish you the best of luck with your v5 adventures as we get started here with moving to the next major version of rlbot i personally am very excited and i hope the transition goes smoothly for you